Well, NFL fans, it's finally here. That's right. The Super Bowl is coming up on Sunday. The culmination of the 2023 season is upon us in Las Vegas as the San Francisco 49ers take on the defending champions, Kansas City Chiefs, at Allegiant Stadium on Sunday. I'm Scott Branson with Sports Knot, and we're here with our NFL managing editor. His name is David Cool, and we're going to give you a preview of this game. And David will share some of his insights on where he thinks it might go. So, David, we look at this matchup. Boy, I'll tell you what. Uh, we expected the 49ers to be there. We go back to the middle of the season. The narrative around the Chiefs was, uh-oh, what's going on? This offense isn't as good as it's been in the past. And that's certainly true. But the Chiefs' defense picked up uh, more than the slack for them and has them here in this game. When you look at this matchup, uh, a little surprising, but not surprising when you check it out, uh, especially the, the Super Bowl champions being back in it. But when you look at the matchup now at this point in the season, uh, I think it's got the makings of a really good game, even though the 49ers, frankly, have a better roster. But the Chiefs, Andy Reid and Patrick Mahomes just can't be counted out. I would agree with that. And going back to like the Christmas Day game that they played against the Raiders, there was no way that this Chiefs team was going to be going to the Super Bowl. I remember even doing a video short on that, saying that this team was not going to the Super Bowl with that <laughs> offense that they have. But, right. but the thing is, at the time, their defense was still playing really well. They were still holding teams down quite a bit. And they have the second ranked defense in the league. And that's really what's carried them all the way through this year, even as they were going through their offensive struggles. The defense was consistent throughout. And, and that's that's played all the way through the playoffs while the offense got it together. And really, it wasn't just the offense getting it together. It was just Patrick Mahomes being Patrick Mahomes. Yeah, incredible. And that's that's why, I mean, I look at the line, of course, the 49ers still favorite favorites. And I, I understand that logic from the perspective of their roster, right? 49ers are stocked. We've talked about it all season long here, David. But at the same time, the Chiefs, Patrick Mahomes, Andy Reid in a big game, it, it's hard for me to wrap my head around how they're actually not favored as the Super Bowl uh, champions, returning Super Bowl champions. But this 49ers team, too, David, I mean, you look at not only offensively, but defensively, where they invested a lot of money on that front offensive line. Um, this 49ers team seems ready to make that, that next jump and to bring home that Lombardi trophy. When you look at them coming into this game, any concerns uh, and what trends do you see that maybe show that the 49ers are ready to perhaps bring another Lombardi trophy back to the Bay Area? Well, this is Kyle Shanahan's best team, I believe. I think this is even better than the team that they brought to the Super Bowl the last time. One big reason why is at the quarterback position, I believe. I think yes. Brock Purdy is a significant upgrade over Jimmy Garoppolo. Jimmy got into the Super Bowl didn't execute down the stretch as we saw in that game. Although if he would have hit that that shot to Emmanuel Sanders, <laughs> yeah, deep shot to Emmanuel Sanders, he's MVP of the game. And the Absolutely, win the game, and they're Super yes. Bowl champions. But this yes. is a better team on both sides of the ball. I think that, of course, their offensive line is is that is of course changed over completely. They've got they got Trent Williams in the meantime, who's oh by the way maybe the left best left tackle ever, and so they have him up front, and then you have of course the the uh, skill position players. Around McCaff or around Brock Purdy, with starting with Christian McCaffrey, mm. who they got last year. So this team is just more skilled on both sides of the ball. Uh, going even to the defensive backfield, uh, which are various words who they got from the Chiefs. Yeah. So that he's he's their best cornerback. He he was named a second team All Pro this year. So so they are they're great on both sides of the ball. The the concern I have about them is that in their first two playoff games they were down. Yeah, they were they were down playing from behind. They had to play from behind against the Packers and the Lions. They're down 24 to 7 against the Lions at halftime, and we're already writing them off. There's just no way they're going to come back from a 17 point deficit because it only happened one other time in the NFC Championship game, and it was a 49ers team, 2012. But yeah. they came back in that game. Brock Purdy was was marvelous down the stretch, 13 to 16, 174 yards, touchdown, scrambled four yards when he needed to, broke away, used his legs. And that to me uh, shows me that this team is ready to take it the next step because they've been it through the fire. They've they've seen they've seen a, a large deficit and they've been able to rally and come back from that. And so this team, I think, is ready to take that next step. And I I, I would favor them in this game, although it's hard to do so over a Mahomes team, uh, sure. you, you, defending champion uh, Patrick Mahomes team. It's it's tough to to pick against the Chiefs, but. I will in this case. And I'm sure you want me to give you a score eventually. <laughs> eventually so. we'll get there. But you brought up Brock Purdy and you talked about game manager, which is, you know, why is that? Why is that a dirty phrase? 
Look, if you look at the Chiefs since you talked about the Raider games, and I talked to Michael Lombardi, NFL insider, earlier this week, and he talked about how that was the change point for the Chiefs because Andy Reid said, you know what? I can't run the offense like we've been running it. We just can't do it. We're not going to win. He was embarrassed by that loss. So they change. They become more balanced. They start running the ball more. And if you look at Patrick Mahomes over the tail end of the season when the Chiefs have done been on this run and gotten to the Super Bowl, he's become more like Brock Purdy, a game manager. Imagine that. So that term to me should not be a dirty word. But you look at these two quarterbacks and where they're at and the weapons they have, and boy, you look at it and say, yes, both defenses, you know, best two defenses in the NFL. But you look at the quarterbacks and you just know that the quarterback play is going to be stellar. And this game, the matchup between those two guys is going to be fascinating. Newsflash for everybody. (laughs) Every quarterback is a game manager. Imagine that. Every quarterback is a game manager. So I was watching, I was, I saw Joe Montana on the Pat McAfee show talking about this very thing about the whole notion of, of why it's like a scandalous term almost to be called a (laughs) game manager. Right. And, and, And Joe Montana was sitting there going, I always thought of myself as the mailman. I'm just going to deliver the ball to this guy. I'm going to deliver the ball to this guy, Jerry right. Rice, John Taylor, Roger Craig, <laughs> Brent Jones, you know, and that's really all uh, Brock Purdy does in that offense is he has the weapons around him. Yes. You have to have the weapons around you. And all he's doing is he's figured out in, in that offense, what his role is in the offense. His role is to get to the, the ball to the guys who can catch it and run with it after the catch. And that team is the best in the NFL at running after the catch. So mm-hmm. why not get them the ball in space in that Kyle Shanahan offense? There's very there, there's lots of opportunities there to get open receivers, get the ball in space, get it to them on time, accurately, in a, in a way where they can catch it and run with it. And that's what Brock Purdy has done magnificently. And so game manager, go ahead and call him a game manager. He's a great game manager. And if he wasn't a great game manager, they wouldn't be in the Super Bowl right now. That's correct. That's correct. Yeah, I I don't get that either. And I think also diminishing the talent of Brock Purdy because he's a game manager is not fair either, especially you talk about the pressure that he's been under in his short career on a stacked roster like the 49ers with the high expectations. That says a lot. Uh, We look at the other side of the ball here, too. The coaching uh, to me is very interesting because these guys have a lot in common, actually. Very different, obviously, from an age perspective and experience perspective, uh, but both very focused on their team, both relaxed guys. They let their teams kind of do their thing, have fun with them a bit, but at the same time insisting on uh, discipline and execution. But you look at the matchup here with the coaching and and you say to yourself, boy, this is sort of a very interesting piece because even though Kyle Shanahan, known as an offensive guy, as is Andy Reid, um, you look at Steve Spagnola on one sideline and you look at the other side with that stacked 49ers roster and you say, boy, as much as we want to talk about the quarterbacks and all that stuff because we love offense, these defenses and the staffs there with the Chiefs and the 49ers are going to play a big part of this game too. Absolutely. And, and, the, and the biggest difference between, I think, this Super Bowl and the last time they played is the Chiefs defense. Mm. Because the Chiefs defense, the last time they played, I believe it was like middle of the pack, 15th in the league, I think. At the time, 2020, this this year they were second in the league. They're tremendous against the pass. Uh, they have guys in the defensive backfield, Trent McDuffie, uh, uh, Legereus Sneed, those guys back there who, who can go after the ball, who, who are great cover corners. They're, they're like glue. Uh, they just they stick the guys. And and then up front, you got a guy like Chris Jones in the middle who just collapses a pocket. Uh, he, he's he's one of the best pass rushers in the league at 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 any position along the defensive line. He's, he was third, I think, this year. He was sixth among defensive linemen, of course, according to Pro Football Focus, just overall as a defensive uh, lineman. And so Chris Jones, just uh, consistent up front. They get the push up the middle, which is where the 49ers are weak, quite frankly, is the middle of that offensive line. Yeah. And that's where they can get to Brock Purdy quickly if that's – if you know that that's – that's where they're going to break them down is right there. If, if there's going to be any other place in the field. Yeah. And that's the one thing too, that popped out at me looking at the numbers, David, I want to get your point about that San Francisco defense is throughout the season, a remarkable number to talk about just how good they've been is they gave up 10, 10 rushing touchdowns the entire season, but they've now given up five in just two games in the playoffs. Are you, is that from that middle? Do you think, or where, where is the issue there that San Francisco can do? Cause I, I, Isaiah Pacheco of the Chiefs, you know, he's that mean runner, and and with the Chiefs more balanced now, running the ball more than they used to, they're going to have to stop that, right? Well, what they're going to do is they're going to see where Chase Young is lining up on the field, mm. and they're going to run right at him. 
<laughs> because Chase Young, as we know, <clears throat> when he came into the league, great pass rusher out of Ohio State. He came in, of course, the year after Nick Bosa did. They were teammates at Ohio State. Now they're, they're back together again on that defensive <laughs> line. And you would think, wow, formidable defensive line. They're just going to just uh, – they're going to eat everybody up. Well, what they found is that he's quite uh, susceptible to the run on that side. He gets pushed around a lot. And, you know, if I'm a 49er fan, I'm really concerned about that left side where Chase Young is on the right defensive – on the right defensive front – left part of the left side of the line for for the Chiefs, that's where they're going to attack. They're not going to attack Nick Bosa on the run because Bosa is actually good against the run. Right. But what they're going to do is they're going to they're going to attack that left side where where Chase Young is. That's where they're going to make their hay. Yeah, no doubt about it. All right. So we look at the matchup now, some of the keys here, David. And and one of the things that I think is really important, because we know, we know kind of the playbook, if you will. He's always got some surprises, but we know what Andy Reid likes to do. He likes to script that offense, go with it. We know he's going to put that run into the point you just talked about, the weakness with the 49ers there with Chase Young. You look at that. So to me, that tells me that not only does that 49er defense have to uh, understand and kind of disrupt that script, but also I think the 49ers offensively got to come out on that Chiefs defense and they got to they score quickly and get a fast start. You agree with that? I totally agree. I think what they need to do is in this game, and I think I think we'll see it from Kyle Shanahan, is that they will run the ball, run the ball, run the ball, because that is the Chiefs' mm -hmm. defensive weakness yes. is against the run. So knowing that they're great against the pass, they're weak against the run. Chris Jones is not a great run defender. He's a great pass defender, not a great run defender. So they're going to attack that defense with Christian McCaffrey. They have a lot, so many running schemes, as we know. They have a lot of misdirection. A lot, of, a lot of things going on where they they can they cause confusion mm. in, in a defense with, with the linebackers, especially at that second level, where they don't know what the heck is going on. They got this guy motioning this way, this guy motioning this way, this guy's this guy's pulling this way, but this guy's coming underneath. You know, he's doing a cutback run here. That, you know, so so they, they got a the, the Chiefs have a problem here with Christian McCaffrey. I think Christian McCaffrey to me, it, he's the favorite to be the MVP of the game. Yeah, because, I would agree with you. Yeah. Because for this, for that very reason, that I think they're, the Renaires are going to come out and I think they're going to uh, right, try to establish the run right away. And if they're making yards with that run, they're gonna, just going to keep at it. And they'll keep pushing on the, on the Chiefs defensive front and then find those great opportunities for Brock, play action passing, to hit those shots you know, all around you with Ayuk and Kittle and, and all those guys that they have available to them. So I think that's the, that's the game plan if I'm Kyle Shanahan. Yeah, on the other side, Andy Reid, from an offensive standpoint against that 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 49 defense, we talked about the run, but also, to me, I mean, it, it, it's it's no secret. The, the Chiefs have got to get Travis Kelsey in space. they got to get Travis Kelsey involved from a passing game perspective. Of course, Rasheed Rice came along at the end of the season. You expect him to be involved. Um, when you look at that Chiefs offense, if, if the 49ers are successful at at least slowing down the run for Kansas City, is there any other – avenue other than Travis Kelsey having to have a good game and if the Chiefs were to somehow come out on top is he the favorite to win the the uh the the MVP because of what he's able to do especially in that short passing game I think what the key here will be is Mahomes ability to extend plays mm -hmm. so because if they're if the Niners are able to bottle up that running game to bottle up Pacheco not let him get anywhere then that lead, that that puts the onus on Mahomes who's quite capable of doing it himself. And there were times during the year where he, he's tried to do it himself. And sometimes it went well, sometimes it didn't go so well. He, <laughs> he does have the weapons. The thing is, if he's able to buy time, that's a killer for the 49ers defense. Yeah. They're he, gonna creates. Be, he creates, he, right? On the move. He's the, he's the best creator in the game. Uh, we know how electrifying Lamar Jackson is when he's able to extend plays and run. But Mahomes, is, he takes it to the next level. He's a, he, he's looking not just to run, but he, he's looking to to make plays down the field, and he's able to spot guys and and just hit them, you know, in space. And and th those guys are looking to get open. So that's where you know he's going to be able to get the ball to Kelsey is on those extended plays, not just on just the scripted plays where we know we're going to Kelsey if if I see get this look. Uh, right. He's gonna he's gonna get it to him on those extended plays, and the Niners have to keep Mahomes from extending plays. Yeah, no, no doubt there. Okay, David, let's move into now how you think this game plays out. Give me, you've already tipped us that that you're going to pick the 49ers here, which is fair, but tell me a little bit about how you see this game going. I see a close game. I think that's why the line is the way it is. I think it was two the last time I saw it. 
or, or somewhere around there. A lot of folks betting on the Chiefs, a lot of people looking at that as a good play. But um, these teams, to me, and the coaching staff, so talented, so good, that I, I foresee it going either way. But you like the 49ers. Tell me how they win this game uh, and, and how what your prediction is from a score perspective. I would predict the 49ers to win the game 27-24. They're going to win it because they're going to have the ball last. Ah. I think it's going to, I think they'll have the ball last and they're going to run it down the field and and they'll win the game either on a Jake Moody field goal <clears throat> or with a touchdown, but they're going to win the game 27-24. That's my prediction. And even though I said that I think McCaffrey's the favorite to win the MVP based on the game planning, I think it's more of a Hollywood script and a Cinderella story mm. to make Brock Purdy the MVP. So <laughs> I, I'm actually going to pick him to be MVP, even though I think McCaffrey is more of the favorite for it, if that makes any sense. It does. Quarterbacks always get all the love. Now, he they might do. end up he might end up deserving it, but we know most important position on the field, quarterback. MVP, most likely quarterback. MVP of the Super Bowl, most likely quarterback, right? Unless, like you said, Christian McCaffrey goes out there and rushes for 200 yards or has 250 all-purpose yards. That could change depending on how the game flows. But I, I agree that going back to that dirty term of game manager, if Brock Purdy manages the game so well and, as you say, has the ball last, leads this team on a game-winning drive, I see that happening. I really do. And you're right. It would be a great Hollywood ending uh, for that one. So you got a 27-24, which makes a lot of sense. I think it's going to be a heck of a Super Bowl. And I think that uh, for this first time in Las Vegas, people are going to love this. It's going to be a great, great show. And don't forget, you can catch all the action, all the coverage leading up to Sunday's game up on sportsnot.com. David, the entire staff here at Sportsnot has been just killing it on the Super Bowl. We will do so, including up until the game, during the game, after the game, you name it. So make sure you uh, check it out. Make sure you also subscribe to the YouTube channel here. Also, do us a favor, hit that notifications bell. Also hit the thumbs up. Tell us you like it. Leave your comments down below, and we appreciate all of the interactions. David, I know it's going to be a busy weekend, and uh, I'll be right there next to you. Look forward to it, and we'll talk to you next week. Sounds great, Scott. Can't wait. All right. For everybody here at Sports Knot, we're gearing up for Super Bowl 58 in Las Vegas on Sunday. Thanks for being with us, and we'll talk to you very soon.